Thanks to everyone who reminded me that I have a CNC plasma cutter and perhaps I could cut out my own sprockets. Well, I hadn't actually forgotten. <laughs> it's just that I tried to make sprockets a few years ago without success, so I hadn't thought to try again. But two things have changed since then. The first is the sprockets that I'm attempting are for a bigger chain, so perhaps not so critical. The second thing is that Extreme Plasma have given me an upgrade to their software. In fact, it's a whole new package, comes in a whole new computer. Oh, fancy. That. Is that a PC? It's a tiny. How does that work? Yep. Magnificent. Wow. Intense, right? <laughs> what a wonderful world we live in. And also an upgraded controller box. Okay, good. So thank you very much, Rob. It's wonderful to have it back up and running again. Okay, there's the Z-axis. Now we just have to put them all together. Easy peasy. There's a link in the description if you are thinking of getting one of these amazing machines and transforming your life. Just saying. Now the software is new to me and I'm still getting the hang of it. So this video isn't really about that. I'll show you that another time. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how I got on with my sprockets because I think it's so interesting and exciting to make your own. <laughs> it won't fit now. And you can go as big as you like, far bigger than what's available to buy normally. Yeah, kind of. Just. As you know, plasma cutting is seen as cheap and fast, but not always very accurate. At least not as accurate as other cutting methods like laser cutting or water jet cutting. But sprockets just won't work if they're not cut out accurately. They have to fit the chain snugly everywhere. So I wasn't surprised when the sprockets that I cut out the last time weren't quite good enough to work. But let's try again. I'm using Coral Draw to make my drawings, but it doesn't actually draw sprockets, <laughs> as other programs do actually. But that doesn't mean that I can't draw them anyway by myself, bit by bit. And it is satisfying, so I filmed it in case you were interested too. Start by drawing a polygon with the same number of sides as the number of teeth that you want on your sprocket. Next, you need to shrink or stretch your polygon until each facet or side measures the same distance as a link in your chain. Okay, that length of the link is is also what's called the pitch of the chain. So this is half inch roller chain. That means there's half an inch between the center of each link. To compare, this is three eighth chain, a little smaller of course. Now half an inch is 12.7 millimeters. So I shrink and stretch the shape until each of the sides is 12.7 millimeters. Whoops, a bit too big. Now, the only other measurement you need is the diameter of each of those little rollers inside the chain. In this case, um, this is 8.5 millimeters. So you could simply drill um, an 8.5 millimeter hole at each of the corners and then trim down the outside and you would have your own sprocket straight away. And it should fit. But we're doing this without a drill because it's for the CNC machine. So I'm going to draw the holes. Now, we're going a little further to finish drawing each of the teeth. For that, we need um, to draw a second circle around each of the holes. 
The diameter of this circle reaches the next hole on either side. Okay. This gives you the shape of the rest of the teeth, but they need to be trimmed to length. And I don't think that's particularly critical how long they are. Just draw another big circle where it looks about right. Now, you have all the lines that you need now. So you just need to join them up and delete the bits that you don't need. Now, in this program, Coral Draw, it's a bit tedious. You need to add nodes in the intersections and then join them up again. I don't know how your program works, but in Coral Draw, you need to combine all the parts first so that they join up with each other. You could go around each of the teeth individually doing that same job, or you can just do a segment like this and copy that and rotate it by the correct amount. And make sure that it's rotating around the center of the sprocket, of course. So yes, it is a bit slow and tedious, but look what you can do. You can draw a perfect sprocket with any number of teeth you want. Now, if you don't want to do all this yourself, Matthias Vandal has a program you can buy, it's very cheap, that draws sprockets and cogs and things like that. I'll put a link to that in the description, but I quite like drawing my own. So now I have a drawing and I can take it to the CNC machine. The new torch height controller won't work if the surface isn't clean. Guess how I know that? <laughs> and of course, I gave it a new tip for the special job. Now this is the sprocket I just drew, which did turn out fine, but I could have bought that because it's not such an unusual size. But this is the reason I learned to draw my own sprockets. This one's big, 80 teeth. This program sets things up for you very easily, unless you want to get involved, when it can get very complicated. But if you're happy with the default settings, then it's very, very quick. You just need to tell it how thick your metal is and whereabouts you want to start cutting and also where the top of the metal is. All quite reasonable questions, really. Or you can make an infinite number of adjustments to the cutting height and the speeds and the power and the piercing and the height and everything. But let's not do that now, okay? So this is six millimeter thick steel and let's see what the default settings do. Well, first of all, I do a dummy run without cutting anything. After all, if there's any way to avoid messing things up, then it's worth doing because this steel, any steel is very expensive. Now it seems to know where to go and so I start it again from the beginning. This time with the machine turned on. If the pieces drop through when they're cut out, then you know it's cutting well. Now this piece can't drop because of the supports underneath. The next cut is a small hole for a bolt and that dropped. Good, All right. And here comes a bigger one. And that one dropped too. Very good sign. So let's skip ahead to the crucial part, the teeth are all around the edge. Wiggle wiggle, in and out, round and round, 80 times in and 80 times out, and it has to meet up perfectly at the beginning. 
If it catches or misfires or starts wandering off in the wrong direction, as has happened many times in the past, of course, then all is lost. So, this is an anxious time. But we're on the home straight now and nearly done. And look at that. Isn't, isn't that pretty good? <laughs> Looks perfect, doesn't it? Well, obviously can't actually be perfect, but really it's very, very good. Clean cuts everywhere with very little dross on the back. And the cuts, well, they're never completely vertical when the torch is changing direction continuously. But these are excellent. And yet, <laughs> it didn't quite fit the chain. Of course it didn't. It's just a bit too tight. And after a few links, the chain won't sit down in the pockets. With a smaller sprocket, one with fewer teeth, you might get away with it. You might not even notice because not so many teeth have to fit in the chain. But because this one is so big, maybe 50 teeth have to all sit in the chain at the same time. It took about half an hour of careful fettling until the chain sat comfortably. And I think I should have made the drawing with slightly larger holes for the rollers. But you don't want to make them too big either. Hmm. Anyway, I'm very pleased with this sprocket in the end and made some more too, see? So now I just need to install them on the locomotive and see what happens. But I'm still waiting for other parts, so I'm not quite ready to go yet. But don't go too far away, okay? <laughs>